Dengue fever, which is afflicting Latin America and the Caribbean at historic levels, officially became an outbreak in St. Lucia. In the rest of the Caribbean and Latin America, there have been over 11.5 million suspected cases and 4,500 deaths as of August 29th. The Ministry of Health is urging heightened awareness and warning that measures for containing the disease must be taken. Over the last few weeks, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs has continued to provide updates to the public on the significant increases in trends of dengue viral infection. These increasing trends now constitute an outbreak. This means that the numbers currently being reported exceed the numbers expected and as such warrant an immediate and targeted response. The outbreak in St. Lucia is not as bad as in other countries, but because of St. Lucia's small size, the threat is greater and requires a national response. Based on current circumstances, young people in the urban north of the island are more vulnerable at this time. As of January 1st, 2024, to date, the Ministry of Health has confirmed 205 cases of dengue. No deaths have been recorded. Of these cases, 53% are female, with more than half occurring in the 15 to 49 age group. While these cases are observed to be spread throughout the island, the majority have been confirmed in the north of the island, with 29% in Castries, also 29% in Grosely, and 11% from Babono. August accounted for 47% of all cases to date, which was a 174% increase from the previous month of July. St. Lucia's dengue outbreak may not be as bad yet, but the infection rate has been spiking dramatically. Cases seem to be continuing on an upward trend, with approximately two-thirds of that confirmed for August, already confirmed for September. While most of the reported cases are concentrated in the northern, central, and eastern parts of the island, cases have also been reported in the south and west of the island, but to a lesser extent. The mosquitoes that spread the virus are the same ones that also spread Zika virus, yellow fever, and chikungunya, making the potential health security threat even higher. Peak biting periods are in the early morning and early evening. Urban areas are especially vulnerable because of unplanned development and because the mosquitoes breed in man-made containers. The recent heavy rainfall helps to create more breeding environments. The good news is that most cases present mild symptoms. About 75% of dengue infections are asymptomatic or produce a very mild febrile illness. Persons with mild dengue may present with fever accompanied by rash, nausea or vomiting, pain behind the eye, muscle and joint pain. Recovery from infection is believed to provide lifelong immunity against that particular serotype. However, cross immunity to the other serotypes after recovery is only partial. After recovering from a first dengue infection, a person is protected from infection with the remaining three dengue serotypes for two to three months. Subsequent infections or secondary infections as they are referred to by other serotypes increase the risk of developing severe dengue. Dr. Foswar reminded St. Lucians that dengue fever is transmitted by mosquitoes and not from person to person and that containing the virus should be focused on eliminating breeding grounds for mosquitoes. Dengue fever cannot be transmitted from one person to another and requires the presence of the mosquito. It is common to have several persons in the household affected with dengue fever as all that is required is the presence of a mosquito and an infected individual. Prevention and control, therefore, involves the elimination of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Because the vector requires water to breed, the public is asked to assist in the control of dengue by eliminating breeding sites in and around the homes. The vector is capable of breeding in the smallest of receptacles, so frequent checks around the home is essential to combat the spread of dengue. For Choice News Now, I'm Jason Seafley.